question is, is the conviction about uh, what steps need to be taken, the initiatives need to be taken there, and is the execution capability and intent there? And in terms of, you know, what business thinks, business thinks that implementation execution is the key to the difference between what's desirable and doable. And so we absolutely need to see implementation and execution. What are these key factors? One, stabilizing mining, as we've talked about, and supporting high growth sectors like tourism. Two, stabilizing labor relations, introducing the national minimum wage, but also linking that to an improvement in productivity and wage relationship. Three, increasing outputs in public health, health education infrastructure. Fourth, clamping down on underperformance and corruption in state-owned enterprises and professionalizing state-owned enterprises by appointing skilled staff and board members as a precursor to minority listings. You know, the Chinese have very successfully raised capital and modernized their state-owned enterprises through effectively listing minority stakes on a very systemic basis. And they've improved the productivity and the capitalization of these enterprises in the process. Particular focus on ESCOM. Six, reprioritizing budget expenditures. And I must say, my contention would be that when it comes to real time of pressure in South Africa, and if you're the Minister of Finance, the National Treasury, and you're having this conversation about what resources you have available, digging into it, you will find lots of potentially wasteful allocations, which you can much improve the return on that investment and reallocate to areas of greatest need. Businesses do that all the time. And I think what you've seen, particularly in the periphery of Europe, where you saw a strong cost-cutting in the state, but at the same time, over time, you saw a bigger throughput in terms of growth in the economy, we may have been heading down that road of needing to be much more efficient in terms of the allocations. I would just ask you to think about the Road Accident Fund. And I talked to the Minister of Finance about this when I met with him. And I said to him, my understanding is there's about 6.8 billion rand of allocation to the road accident fund, of which roughly 4 billion is legal, legal expenses in terms of claims. And all we need to think about is thresholds, use of technology, uh, use of ways to effectively cut out, with respect to the legal profession, uh, that layer of wasteful expenditure that is a function of Claimant officers effectively causing disputes, those disputes causing on both sides the hiring of lawyers and advocates, which leads to a wasteful amount of expenditure of taxpayer money on these claimants. And the question is, how efficient is that process? And if that was one example that can be cascaded into many other examples, I think you'll find lots of resources to use in the state that we don't necessarily identify. But that requires fighting vested interests as well. The seventh point is those areas where we cannot afford to effectively, as a country, marginalize and forget the unemployed uh, as, as a category of persons. So we need to look for productive activities in the youth sector. Prabhin Gordon introduced the youth uh, incentive tax scheme in his time. And we need to think about SMEs. We'll come back to that in a second. And lastly, coordinating economic policy. You know, South Africa. Uh, has had at times a very tight-knit economic uh, set of ministers in the cabinet, and they've run that. Of late, we have a far more dispersed sort of interaction, and this has led to, for example, the tourism visa regulations, which has been sort of taken as a decision by one cabinet uh, department, but another cabinet department is being, you know, effectively objecting or not able to control that, and so you get dysfunctionality. The key of this, though, is implementation and execution. And it's just basically getting the basics right. You know, this is about us not tripping over our feet. Now, some constituencies that I've mentioned uh, are uncomfortable with the notion that all roads lead to the government. Okay? And so the question is, what is the relative roles of the social partners in a compact for effectively driving growth? And so without going through it, this is merely to say that it's absolutely true that South Africans are in it together, that we have reasonable expectations as to what government should do to drive the economy. We have reasonable expectations about business's role 
in driving domestic growth, jobs, raising domestic capital expenditure, managing the workplace environment, being a positive employer, engaging in technical training, support for the youth, seeking partnerships with government in their own interests, but also in the national interest, constructive intervention in public policy and regulatory environment, assisting in targeting SMEs, compliance with regulatory and governance requirements, paying tax, et cetera, et cetera, and driving empowerment and building a base of BEE. Labor also has this responsibility of effectively creating a stable environment for industrial relations, linking wages to CPI, and adjusting increases with productivity improvements. The public sector performance, monitoring and evaluation of public services and the implementation of accountability in the state uh, through the public uh, uh, sector uh, laborers and employees. Identifying and impl implementing measures to improve basic workers, business, community relations. Engaging pension funds is a obviously fair game on constructive investment of worker savings for economic growth. Uh, and engaging the government on appropriate public policy and regulatory environment as it affects workers.